Born into a family of low status in the Roman province of Dalmatia, Diocletian rose through the ranks of the military to become cavalry commander to the Emperor Carus. After the deaths of Carus and his son Numerian on campaign in Persia, Diocletian was proclaimed emperor. Finding the empire too large to be governed by a single ruler, Diocletian selected as his colleague General Maximian, a brave but fierce and ignorant soldier who, like himself, had risen to be a rank in the army. He therefore created the diarchy, the rule of two. Diocletian ruled in the east while Maximian ruled in the west. Diocletian felt like the empire was still too difficult to control, so he created the Tetrarchy. A Tetrarchy, Greek meaning leadership of four people, is a system of government where power is divided between four individuals. The first Tetrarchy was instituted by Emperor Diocletian in 293 and lasted until 313. Diocletian appointed two Caesars, Constantius and Galerius to aid Diocletian and his co-emperor in the defense of the empire. Augustus, Diocletian, and his Caesar, Galerius, controlled the east. Augustus, Maximian, and his Caesar, Constantius, controlled the west. The Roman Empire was divided between the four princes, the Tetrarchy. Diocletian thought he was losing the favor of the gods due to Christian worship. Roman clergy was performing divination and they couldn't get readings. The reason cited for this was that they saw Christians performing the sign of the cross in Diocletian Palace. Diocletian, being a religious conservative, believed that the years of war in Rome caused the Roman gods to be unhappy with the empire. At this time, there were Christian churches all around the empire. There was even one on the hilltop that looked down on his palace. Christians at this time would claim that their religion superseded imperial authority of the Roman Empire. This led to were upset with Rome for tolerating Christians. The Edict of Diocletian ordered the destruction of fear of a revolution. By 300 AD, Christianity had grown and now had some money and power. It was the largest monotheistic religion in the empire. So this led to the prohibit the hybridation, the Christian assembly for worship, and the rest of the Christian clergy. It also demanded that Christians renounce their faith to worship Roman gods or be subjected to torture and death. The lower class did not see the Christians as threats. It was primarily the upper class that feared them. Diocletian did not particularly mind the Christians, but was influenced by Caesar Galerius. Galerius was not passionate about traditional Roman religion. He desired to restore complete unity. However, this only under, undermined their authority, destroyed the peace, and set the stage for Constantine. Diocletian created the beginning of the bureaucracy and technocracy of modern societies. People worked specialized jobs for the government, and it became important to have technical skills. Diocletian added two new tax reforms, the Jugum tax and the Capitatio tax. The Jugum tax was the tax on cultivable land. The Capitatio tax was on individuals. Monetary form reforms were made as well, bringing back gold, silver, and bronze coins, which was increasing the number of mints. This helped stave off financial crisis. Thanks to more people focusing on fewer things in general, management was better. Senators also lost their power. The most they could hope to be was the mayor of Rome. All this led to Diocletian being considered an autocrat. He created the largest centralized government staffed by career civil servants the Western world had ever known. There were seven layers of government altogether, and now there is the ruler and the ruled. In 305 AD, Diocletian and Maximian abdicated their positions as Augusti just as they had promised they would 20 years before. Diocletian retired to an estate in Split in modern Yugoslavia, which was close to medicinal sulfur springs where he could receive treatment for the aliments for old age. <laughs>